Well, I want to welcome you to uh, <clears throat> the third in the series uh, with the Wilhelm Brothers. In this uh, short film, there's going to be a lot of uh, archery used. And of course, you can look at the equipment. This is, again, the late 1930s. They made their own equipment, which was common for people into archery at that time. Uh, of course, the bows are made out of wood, as are the arrow shafts. Of course, this is the ancient uh, technology that uh, was around for thousands of years. Nowadays, of course, archery, we use fiberglass and uh, carbon fiber and the modern space age compound bow is, is very common. And these are good, good equipment and good tools, but it's interesting to see the level of accuracy that was obtainable with this older technology. Uh, one of the scenes with the apple and the dice, and you'll see it, one of the things to look at in that scene is the background, you'll see that there's actually a pretty good wind blowing. So these archers, their skill level was such that even something in the environment like the wind, they could take into account and still make an accurate shot. And of course they had made their bow and their, their arrows and all the equipment, the string, all this stuff was in such a level of perfection that it could uh, deliver this kind of accuracy. And of course they used a different type of uh, skill and they talk about it where it was instinct rather than a calculated aim. They weren't, they weren't trying to say how many yards this shot was or use a, a laser range finder or anything like this. They just guessed it with skill of course or I should say maybe estimated it and did so accurately and understood their bow, the arrow, the wind, all these kind of things such that they could deliver incredible accuracy. And of course our ancient ancestors that would live, eat, drink, sleep, archery could also deliver this kind of uh, accuracy. And we know the Wilhelms did that same kind of thing. They had a level of dedication to archery uh, that we don't see or few of us are able to obtain in the modern world. It was, uh, their bows were an everyday kind of thing, not a once a month or a weekend kind of thing. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this um, video. It's, I think, worth looking at, and I think you'll enjoy it. And with that, I thank you. This is Ted Husing, and these two champs we wish you to meet are the Wilhelm brothers, Ken and Walt, of Yermo, California, champion free shooting archers and trick bowmen of the world. When these lads shoot, they shoot the thrill. The youthful and enthusiastic gallery are Boy Scouts from South Pasadena. Their eyes fairly pop out as they watch these dead shots. Of course, this is only elementary stuff, but then the Wilhelms are only warming up. As for accuracy, there's little to choose between the two brothers. Ken hits them every time and Walt never misses. In the hands of experts like these, a slender shaft of wood can be a mighty penetrating projectile as deadly as a bullet from a machine gun. For instance, to illustrate how the bow and arrow is successfully used in big game hunting, Walt sets up a hefty ham tightly covered and Ken prepares to soak it or smoke it with a feathered hickory. When a sharp barbed head like this meets its target, well watch and a punctured porker. Even a skillet offers little resistance to the hunting arrow, and if it ever hit a human, wow, scouts, take a look at that heavy metal frying pan, and always stand behind the archer, never in front of him. You get the idea? Yep, they get it all right. It's a demonstration of the power of the modern bow and arrow, which they'll always remember. And 
now let's kiss the boys goodbye and amaze a few girls. Here at Los Angeles City College, the Wilhelms pull a few fancy tricks out of their quivers for the archery squad. The tougher the target, the better they like it, and the better the audience likes it, too. Show the gals a few wrinkles in domestic science. What to do with picnic plates? If you can't stick them, you don't have to stack them. Okay, Walt, remove those plates and on with the next course. Give Ken a ring sometime and he's liable to give you a pointed answer. Ken can get him without even touching him and the arrow catches the moving target exactly in the center. One after another, all pinned in a line and reading from top to bottom, they spell perfect marksmanship. Now look, sister, take the ball and roll it over the grass like this, see? Just roll it and start rolling when I yell OK. OK. You bet it's a double OK. Well, let's retrieve those arrows, girls. We've got some more trick shooting coming up and may need them. Thank you. Just yank them out. No, they won't hurt you. Now a double shot at the rabbit, an absolutely certain way of destroying balloons. This is double bowed accuracy. Difficult targets, these inflated bunnies. They have to be hit squarely or they'll bob out of the way. Very pretty shooting. Did you ever follow an arrow in its flight? With tracer arrows, that's easy. They dip the arrows in a chemical solution that smokes when exposed to the air. This leaves a trail of smoke from bowstring to bullseye and shows just how good these quick shooting Wilhelm brothers are. Watch Walt on the right. He's a dead shot holding the arrow just above his waistline. You know, both these boys would be pretty darn good if they really took time to aim. Yes, they're certainly at home on the range. But out on the Mojave Desert of California, these champs are really at home. Walt sends up a gas-filled balloon for Ken to puncture, if he can. A balloon barrage wouldn't be very effective against this kind of opposition. Being able to see your target is helpful, but not always necessary. The cameraman shows them where he is laying his hat on a blanket. Then the brothers go behind their rocky barricade out of sight of camera and out of vision of their target. Say it'll take more than a desert boulder to bowl them over. Once they get their trajectory of flight, they could shoot this way all day just like a battleship at sea. Say boys, you'd better stop shooting or change your target. I'm not concerned about the blanket, but I would hate to see the cameraman's best Sunday chapeau ruined. Well, Ken plays the stooge as Walt asks him to take a cigarette for a very enlightening idea he wants to try out. Well, I hope it works. long cigarettes were of some practical use. Now, this is not advertising, it's life-saving. Thoughtful Walt always helping his baby brother. Wowee, some service, some shooting. Ah, but you ain't seen nothing yet. Steady can remember what happened to the frying pan. Well, that's one way of cutting down on your smoking. Ken's been on the receiving end, but now it's his turn to dish it out. It looks like the Wilhelm brothers are going to pull the old Wilhelm Tell stunt, and Walt isn't even going to look at Ken. <laughs> Don't know as I blame him. In slow motion, you see it is really simple. As long as Ken hits the apple, everything is okay. And if he missed, well, he just can't afford to miss it. We wouldn't have a picture, would we? Who said an apple a day keeps the doctor away? 
That wasn't only a great demonstration of marksmanship, but a great demonstration of nerve on the part of both men. And now here's something that tops it, a tiny ping pong ball, so you can't blame Walt if he's a little bit nervous. It looks foolhardy, but apparently the size of the target doesn't seem to make much difference. If he can see it, he can hit it. Oh boy, too big, huh? Well, thinks maybe he can make 10 miss on one of these. It's a pair of dice, some fun. Does baby need shoes? Brother, you'd better turn up a seven. That ivory cube is loaded with potential disaster. Yes, and keep them crossed. Nicked it. Ah, oh, but nicking isn't good enough. Well, maybe he can see it better up a little higher on your head, Walt. It's your funeral, but I'll order the necessary flowers. Perfect. Good shot, Ken. Walt seems a little disappointed. He just can't seem to make Ken miss. Well, maybe this collar button will do the trick. You know, these boys are really shooting for trouble, but folks, if he fails, we'll shut off the camera so nobody will be embarrassed. The serious problem on his mind would turn most guys' hair gray in a second. Steady now, Ken. Right on the button. Good boy. Personally, I don't see anything funny at all. But always the practical joker, Ken tells Walt there's a doggone fly in his hair that he'd like to push off with an arrow before he calls it a day. And as for Walt, well, you know the old saying, where there's no sense, there's no feeling, so it's okay with him. Real champs, but always clowning and ready for a practical. <laughs> so after tempting fate the arrows, wouldn't it be rather ironical if somebody got hurt with that frying pan? Well, so long.